as we're talking about this, I was thinking a lot as we were preparing for this episode about affective neuroscience, the study of emotions and the neuroscience of emotions, and some of the theories that would be relevant here. So one of the newer theories in affective neuroscience is the theory of constructed emotion by Lisa Feldman Barrett. And there's some great books on that, How Emotions Are Made, uh, Seven and a Half Lessons About the Brain. So if you want to dive into that deeper, but kind of a big picture of that is that it used to be thought that our brain was very divided between the old brain, like our brainstem, and then our limbic system and our higher order thinking systems. And that these kind of operated separately from one another. One was more evolved than the other. And it was also thought that emotions had like a very specific universal signature in the brain. Grief had a signature. um, Anger had a signature. And what more modern neuroscience is showing is that one, All parts of the brain are communicating with one another all of the time. It's really the patterns in how they're communicating, what gets dialed up, what gets turned down. It's more this idea of neurotags, neurons that fire together and wire together to create patterned ways of interpreting sensory data, of interpreting the world around you, and then creating responses in your body and your autonomic nervous system. And so nothing is as compartmentalized as that. And our emotions don't just come from our limbic system. There's all areas of the brain contributing to that, how we take in information, how we interpret it, and then the outputs that are generated. And there's also not one pattern for one specific emotion. Really what's happening is that our unique nervous system and brain, based on our past experiences, how we construct the world around us, is taking in information from our environment, from all of our sensory systems, reading other people's vocal tone, facial expression, our internal systems, you know, reading our heart rate and our breath, taking in our environment, and it's pulling all of that data and then interpreting it to create an emotional experience that is unique to us based on how our system interprets that data, right? Like I could go out to lunch with someone, say I was going out on a date with someone new, and I feel some unease in my stomach, and I feel my heart is beating a little bit. I might interpret that as I'm excited about this date and I have feelings for the person. I might interpret that as this person is threatening and not somebody that I want to spend with. Or maybe I was feeling a little bit under the weather, and instead I interpret those bodily signals as I think I'm getting sick. And so, or maybe I really am getting the flu and it has nothing to do with the person that I'm with. So the signals can be signals and the emotion that comes from that is based on our interpretation and then prediction and then the output. 